Okay, so welcome to this next video on uh, calcium waves. So what we've seen so far is that um, calcium release from one portion of the intracellular stores, i.e. in one of these portions of the cell, triggers uh, calcium release from the next portion, which triggers calcium release from the next portion. So you get this propagation of this calcium wave. And what we're now trying to get our head around is why, when calcium goes up in one of the regions, it doesn't just stay high. Why does it go back down, basically? And basically, what we do know is that if you have very high calcium uh, concentrations in the vicinity of an IP3 receptor, Forget what I've told you before about it stimulating it. It now, uh, it now does a negative feedback. Uh, it inhibits that IP3 receptor. So, basically, when calcium gets very, very high here, there is a negative feedback, basically. It inhibits its own IP3 receptor. Now, the signal propagates forward because the amount of calcium getting to these IP3 receptors in this neighbouring portion of the uh, endoplasmic reticulum is quite low because it's having to diffuse all the way over here. So it's only a low level of calcium is reaching these IP3 receptors. And low level of calcium, though low, low level of calcium stimulates the IP3 receptors to open, but high levels of calcium causes them to close, basically. So, when calcium goes very high, that causes these IP3 receptors to close, and then it, cl then it closes back down, basically, and that's why calcium goes back down in, uh, after this calcium wave. Now, that's a single calcium wave, and that explains the calcium wave pretty much perfectly. So far, this uh, negative feedback of the calcium explains the IP3 receptors closing, and it explains everything going down. But now there's another thing that we don't understand. Here comes the real thing that we don't understand. Basically, you don't just get a single calcium wave. If the IP3 signal remains there, if I keep stimulating this hepatocyte with phenylephrine, what happens is that you get repeated calcium waves. So you've got one calcium wave, bang, 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 uh, the calcium propagates along, and then you get another calcium wave, bang, bang, bang. So. Basically, if I draw this all over again, if I continue on, I'll do it in colour. If I continue on drawing the calcium concentration for region 1, then we understand all of this graph so far. Calcium went up, it then went down because calcium concentration got too high, and that started having a negative feedback on these IP3 receptors. We're going to go along, and then, oh, another calcium wave is going to happen. So it's going to happen all over again. So calcium concentration here is going to oscillate, basically. And that is going to trigger another calcium wave, basically. So if I do it for region 2 now, what region 2's calcium concentration is going to look like, it's going to look like this. So you're going to get the whole um, calcium wave happening all over again. And if I just complete it now, if I drew, drew it for region 3, then again, you're going to get another rise in the calcium concentration for region 3. So, you get repeated calcium waves happening across this cell um, cytoplasm. So, let's try and understand why that happens. Well, we've stimulated these alpha-1 receptors, and we're continually stimulating those alpha-1 receptors. That means IP3 level is just going to be continually high in the cytoplasm. So, these IP3 receptors are always going to have IP3 bounds to them, pretty much. Okay, so uh, when um, when um, once a single calcium wave has happened, uh, then after a while, calcium is going to get low enough in this area again that the calcium goes from having a negative effect on the IP3 receptors to having a positive effect. So remember, high concentrations of calcium are inactivate the IP3 receptors. Low concentrations of calcium bind to these stimulatory calcium binding sites and activate the IP3 receptors. So again, you're going to get activation of these IP3 receptors, and that's going to trigger another calcium wave, which is going to propagate through um, this hepatocyte. But here comes the thing that is not understood. Basically, the um, amount of IP3 you have in the cytoplasm determines how quickly you get another calcium wave. 
i.e. the frequency of calcium waves that are propagating through the cytoplasm, in, that's determined by IP3. So, the, the, remember what frequency means. I'll just go over this here. Frequency of waves, of these calcium waves, means how many you get per second is equal to number per second, basically. So, how quickly the um, calcium waves are happening in a hepatocyte, i.e. whether you're getting four a second or eight a second, uh, that, uh, that is determined by your IP3 concentration. And in turn, your IP3 concentration is determined by how much um, phenylephrine I initially put the hepatocyte in. So basically, by increasing the concentration of phenylephrine that I have bathed this hepatocyte in, I can make the calcium waves that the hepatocyte is going through more frequent. I can increase the frequency of the uh, calcium waves, basically, by increasing the frequency of the phenylephrine. And we do not understand on the level of the IP3 receptor what, why increased concentration in IP3 should mean that these calcium waves happen more frequently. That's what we don't understand yet. Basically, it must mean that not all of the IP3 receptors are completely occupied by IP3. The IP3 must be falling off, and if you've got a higher concentration of IP3, that must be somehow resulting in the IP3 coming back on quicker, basically. Uh, so something is... Uh, something about my explanation is a lacking, basically, because uh, it doesn't explain how increases in IP3 level causes an increase in the frequency with which these calcium waves are occurring in the cytoplasm of these hepatocytes. So basically, uh, it's very similar to uh, what we see in neurons, basically. Um, I, it's a digital signal. The information about the um, intensity of the stimulus, such as phenylephrine, is not encoded by the, ra by the amount uh, uh, by which calcium in the intracellular compartment rises. Instead, it's encoded by the frequency of these calcium waves. And that's very much so like neurons, where the frequency of action potentials encodes how intense a sensory stimulus is, rather than the amplitude of the change in the electrical potential. An action potential is a binary thing. It can either happen or it can't. Similarly, a calcium wave is a binary thing. It can happen or it can't. And the intensity of a stimulus is not encoded for how by how big the action potential is. And the same for calcium waves. It's not encoded by how big the calcium wave is. Instead, it's encoded by how many calcium waves are happening in a second, i.e. by the frequency of calcium waves. And there's a very good important reason why that is the case. Firstly, uh, ask any engineer. All engineers know that, um, that uh, digital signals are more robust than analog signals. Uh, you can encode information even more easily, more robustly, so not more easily, but more robustly in a digital on-off signal rather than an analog signal which is subject to noise. Um, also, uh, another important reason why you can't encode uh, the um, intensity of a stimulus like phenylephrine by amplitude of calcium waves. Well, think about that. If it were, if if the intensity of the phenylephrine stimulus was encoded for this cell by um, how how large the oscillation in calcium concentration was, i.e. how high calcium concentration went, which it's not. Uh, a calcium wave is a calcium wave. These spikes do not get any bigger, basically, no matter how much phenylephrine you put on. Instead, they become more frequent. If it was encoded by amplitude, then you could just get calcium going higher and higher and higher and higher by putting a higher intensity stimulus on this cell. And calcium is extremely toxic. So you do not want an analog, uh, a uh, calcium signal, because calcium levels could go to those toxic levels for the cell. So a digital signal in which uh, the intensity of a stimulus is encoded by the frequency uh, rather than the amplitude is a better uh, candidate.